what if I told you that you can make up to 250K per year as a prompt engineer? That's right. A prompt engineer is someone who can use tools like ChatGPT, Midjourney, Gemini, and other tools to help a business grow. So in this video, I'm going to show you exactly A to Z. I'm going to show you exactly how to become a prompt engineer and how to get a job as a prompt engineer, which can make you up to 250K per year. Let's start. So what exactly is prompt engineering? So imagine that you have this robot friend, okay? And this robot knows everything that there is to know about like writing stories, math, science, okay? And can give you the perfect best answer. But to get that best answer, you have to ask it the right way. That's exactly what prompt engineering is. Prompt engineering is pretty much being able to ask AI the question in a proper way. Think about it for a second, okay? If you ask good questions, you get best answers, right? So garbage in, garbage out, okay? Ask stupid questions, get stupid answers. Now, before we move forward, let's go and talk about what exactly is AI. So when I say AI, AI is pretty much a simulated version of human intelligence. So when I say simulation, it means that AI cannot think for itself, okay? And when I say AI, I'm talking about machine learning. So what exactly is machine learning? So machine learning is pretty much you give computer a bunch of this training data, right? And it finds a pattern. That's what machine learning is. Now, for example, let's say we want to create this AI simulation that can create names of men and women. So how do we do that? So pretty much we give this computer a bunch of these names, okay? It might say John boy, Linda, girl, okay, you know, Jackie, boy or girl, whatever, right? And then you give it so much data that it realizes what exactly is a boy name and what exactly is a girl. It's going to go ahead and find a pattern, right? And it's going to be able to generate unique, amazing names for a boy or a girl. That's what machine learning essentially is in simplest form. So as of 2024, generative AI has gotten super, super smart. We can generate a lot of amazing stuff. For example, text, okay? So you can give a prompt asking for a proposal for a company, okay? The AI will spit back, you know, with a unique proposal because it has enough data training model on proposal or essays or stories, okay? It knows the exact pattern to use for creating amazing stories, right? Not just that, images. You can generate unique looking images using AI, okay? Music, not just music. You can also generate videos that look so realistic. So yes, we are living in the future. Now, why exactly is prompt engineering so important? Because it's important because if you don't ask the right question in a proper manner, AI is not going to give you the best perfect answer because it does not think for itself. Now, let's get our hands dirty and let's start actually doing some prompt engineering right now. So for the purpose of this demo, we're going to be using ChatGPT to write prompts. Now, there are other companies as well, like for example, Gemini or Midjourney, but ChatGPT is the most advanced one so far. So go ahead and go to google.com and then type up ChatGPT. And once you type up ChatGPT, you'll be able to see this link here. Click on it. You can click on the sec second one as well. So pretty much ChatGPT is a product of a company called OpenAI, which was founded by Sam Altman, Elon Musk, and many other people. So click on try ChatGPT. Keep in mind, it might make you sign up. Okay, so once you're in the dashboard, you'll see something like this, okay? You are ready to write up some prompts. But before that, let me go ahead and give you a quick overview. So on the, on the website here, you'll be able to see on the top, it says ChatGPT4, so pretty much, so ChatGPT4, GPT4, pretty much is the most advanced version of the training model, meaning that it has a lot of data that's it's been trained on, right? We also have GPT 3.5, which is fine as well, but I recommend using the latest one, GPT 4, because the more information these models have, the better and faster they get, okay? So that's that, okay? Now, on here, a typical person might type up, hey, Write me a subject line for an email to get time off work. Okay, that's a normal person writing an email, right? Now, as a prompt engineer though, you might write something else though, okay? So, simple as that, okay? So, imagine that you are, a, so th take a look at this. So, you see how this is better. You see it clearly better because on the first one, it says request blah, blah, blah. But this is kind of better because I told GPT to imagine that you are an HR manager. So, I pretty much told GPT to assume a role. We'll talk about more about that in a bit. So, 
This is ChatGPT. So pretty much you can have a conversation with it and I'm going to show you better and proper ways to have conversation. But I want you to get a ChatGPT account and then start practicing, okay? On the left, you will see that you can also get a pro account if you want to, but the normal account is also fine. On the left, you'll also see my GPTs, okay? Now, my GPTs pretty much means that you can actually go ahead and create your own GPT. Remember I told you earlier that you can actually create an AI by training it on a certain data, right? As a, as a prompt engineer, you might wanna create your own GPT model, which is trained on a specific model. For example, you can click on create a GPT, right so for example maybe i want to create a gpt that will help a copywriting thing company right so it will ask you a lot of information here right so and then you can also feed it information for example right you can upload pdfs or website data or all that information so that way whenever this gpt will respond back to you it'll be based on the information that you know you gave it so you can also create this okay you can also sell these new gpts to companies we'll talk more about that throughout our video as well let's go back on the video and let's let's talk about how to write good prompt. Now here are some best practices to write a good prompt. So number one is clear instructions. So make sure that you give AI clear instructions. Do not try to run around the circle. Okay, that's number one. Number two is adopt a persona, meaning that if possible, try to get the AI to adopt a persona, meaning, hey, you are this, you are that. So it can actually go ahead and gather expertise about that persona. Number three, specify the format. Okay, pretty much tell it how you want the response to be, okay? You cannot expect it to give it to you in a certain format if you don't tell it what you want, okay? Number four is avoid leading to the answer because a lot of you guys are actually giving hints to the AI on what answer do you want. That's going to generate you some bias answers and result okay last but not least limit the scope okay do not try to you know ask information about a broad topic and expect you know something else okay if you want a specific answer ask a specific question now let's go and talk about three ways to write prompts the first one is called role prompting so if the name was not that not that obvious role prompting pretty much means that you ask AI to assume a role. For example, okay, imagine that you are wearing a costume at a Halloween party. So maybe you are wearing a doctor's costume or maybe a pirate, you know, uh, costume. So pretty much you ask AI to assume a role. For example, okay, assume that you are uh, an SEO expert. Assume that you are an advertising expert. Assume that you are an, you know, an amazing journalist. Okay, so you, you ask it to assume a role. So that that way it's going to grab all the best ways to become that you know copywriter that journalist it's going to grab all that information so let me show you an example here okay so for example whenever you're writing a role-based prompt you have to go ahead and let chat GPT know or prompter know what kind of role do you want it to assume so that way it can bring in expertise so for example we can say imagine that you are an expert in uh, marketing right so you go ahead and tell that first okay and then go ahead and you ask a question okay and then you say I want to get more followers on my Instagram okay and it's about copywriting or fitness okay um, fitness okay and then how do you do that so if you give that that information it can go ahead and give you information like this okay it'll tell you exactly what to do because you told it to imagine that you are an expert in marketing and this is going to yield amazing information because it's going to you know get information from expert role model library okay now next up we have something called a shot prompting shot prompting pretty much has three levels so zero shot zero shot means that you want ai to figure things out itself okay just for example okay you're not asking it to assume to be anybody else so it can figure out things on its own so for example if you ask it hey what is the capital of france it's going to say paris right that's zero shots or one shot is when you provide an example so for example hey can you go ahead and provide me you know x y and z and you give one example or multi-shot is whenever you ask a question and you explain and show 
three examples so it can figure things out and take a look at more variables. Let me show you some examples. Okay, now let's go and talk about shot prompting. So I'm gonna show you a three examples. The first one is zero shot and one shot and a few shots. So what's the difference? The first one is called zero shot. So pretty much if you ask a model, what is the capital of Nepal? So it's going to give you a sweet and short answer. There's no ifs and buts, it's not going to explain itself. None of that, okay? Now that is no example. You're not providing any examples. You're not asking it to assume any rules at all, okay? Now what is a one shot? A one shot is whenever you go ahead and provide one example. So for example, I'm going to do this. So I'm gonna ask it to translate, okay? And I gave it one example. So, so what is the difference? So difference is that on the initial one, it did not have any guidance, right? On the second one, it did have, you know, the guidance, right? So for example, I'm gonna show you another one, okay? Write, write a email subject line for promoting fitness product, right? we can do that, okay? And then what we can do is example one, okay? Get slim now, okay? So what we can do is we, I gave it one example. I'm gonna go ahead and click on this. So it's going to use that example on its model, as you can see, okay? And it's going to use get slim now as one of the variables, as you can see, okay? Most of these responses have that thing. It says you know, it's going to kind of reference back to getting slim, okay? You get the idea, right? So now, Multi-shot is pretty much similar to that, but instead of just one example, there are more variables, right? So I might have example number two. So example number two, example number three. So why is this kind of helpful? So let's say you go to a website, right? And you like their you know, headlines, right? What you can do is pretty much copy maybe 10 of their headlines and tell it, hey, generate me a headline about X, Y, and Z, and you give it examples. Now, it, it, it is pretty much going to respond back on top of what information it has and the variables that you provided. So it's very useful if you're trying to, you know, either lead the GPT into something, a variable, or you just want it to access any of the, of the information. So for example, zero shot, or shot right here on the top, you don't want any, you don't want any, you don't want to guide it. You're just letting it do whatever it wants, okay? And one is one example, and multi is with multi examples. And the last one is kind of interesting. It's called chain prompting. So pretty much, you ask AI to explain itself and give you options. So for example, if you ask AI, hey, what is the best way to do X, Y, and Z? It's going to give you multiple options, and it's going to give you reasoning for picking each of those options. So let me show you an example. Now, chain prompting is pretty unique because this way, ChatGPT or any other model will explain itself. So let me explain. So for example, what is, what is the fastest way to go from Dallas to New York? Offer possible option and reasonings, okay? So pretty much, it's going to explain itself. So for example, it's gonna give you multiple option flight, right? It's going to explain to you why it thinks, okay? And also, it's gonna give you flight, train, maybe driving, right? And we're gonna go ahead and ask it more questions. So for example, we might say, which one is the best option for me? Give reasoning, okay? Now it's going to add, it might ask you more questions. So for example, see, it's going to ask you, it's going to give you the comfort. It's going to give you pretty much, it's explaining itself, right? You see like duration, cost, comfort, convenience, high, right? It's so a moderate, right? So you see it's kind of explaining itself. This is called chain prompting where the model will go ahead and explain to you the reason why it, it is saying what it is saying, right? So for example, I'm gonna give you another example. So um, what is uh, 10, Simply 10 times 10, right? Please, so that is, that, that is, that's a, just a zero shot, right? Exp okay, explain how you arrived to that answer. Now it's going to do its best to, you know, see it's going to go ahead and see what it's doing, right? So it's going to go and try to explain itself and give you reasoning, things like that. Make sense? So that's what uh, chain prompting is. Now let's go and take it up a notch. So, so far we were using ChatGPT, the easy version of AI, right? Now we're gonna go ahead and use something called OpenAI's Playground. So that way you will have more settings. You'll have more option to fine tune your responses and also more advanced feature. Let me show you how. 
Now, this is called OpenAI Playground. So this, is, this looks much more advanced than your normal chat GPT because it is and it has more options. Let me show you how to get there. So go to Google, right? Once you go to Google and you can type up OpenAI Playground, right? Uh, and then click on the first one right here. And once you're here, it looks something like this. Don't get freaked out. I'm gonna show you exactly what's here. So it's similar to chat GPT, except you have much better control. So for example, okay, on the top here on the right, it says model. So that means that earlier you had access to chat GPT 3.5 and 4, but here you have more module, I mean the models, okay? Each of these models do different things. So if you go ahead and type up uh, uh, OpenAI models, and you can actually go ahead and learn more about them, exactly what they do. So you can go ahead and take a look at it here, okay? So you can change the model itself, okay? And next up, we have temperature. So pretty much temperature, higher temperature means it's going to go ahead and bring a little bit of randomness, you know, on the response. Now, is a little bit of randomness, okay, yes, some, some responses you do want a little bit, you know, exploration, right? But on some, you if you want it to be much more focused, then you can go ahead and do this, okay? Make sense? I'm gonna go ahead and keep it one. So maximum length is, you can also control how, what's the length of the response. So with chat GPT, you could not do that, right? But with Playground, this is like having all the tools and buttons to do as much and whatever you want, okay? And then of course you have top P, it's going to also go ahead and you know uh, control the sampling of the file as well. There's more stuff here, okay? On the left, we have chat, right? So chat is like chat GPT. Assistant here is pretty much, you can upload information about a product, serve, you know, a company or yourself, and it will use that information as a training model like we, we talked about earlier, right? So that's what assistant model is right here. And on here, we also have um, uh, completion. So completion is pretty much going to go ahead and, you know, if you write up something, it's going to try to complete it, okay? So simple as that. But the latest model that a lot of people are using is chat model here, okay? And on top of that, you can also go ahead and, uh, you know, create your own fine tuning you use a little bit of programming, but you don't have to, okay? I recommend all the prompt engineers to learn how to use the playground, okay? Come up here and just go ahead and just type up, okay? Start using it, right? So you can start by using the completion one here or compare one right here, okay? So with the compare feature, you can what you can do is you can, you know, for example, what I can do is I can see, I want, if I want a difference, for example, this and this, I can type up the same prompt, right? What is the capital of Nepal, right? I can type that up and it will give me different information. So let's now that you know the basics of prompt engineering, where do you go from here? So I recommend each one of you guys to learn more about prompt engineering because what I taught you today is pretty much the basics, okay? And the best place to learn that is going to a website called certifiedpromptengineer.com. You can learn not just the basic, all the advanced version of becoming a good prompt engineer. They will even go ahead and give you a certificate that you can use for getting a job. So once you have that certificate, which you don't need if you don't want to, but it's good to have it. Now, once you have that, what do you actually do to make money using prompt engineering? Now, there are three ways to make money as a prompt engineer so far. So number one is becoming a prompt engineer consultant. So this is where you'll make the most money. This is the you know advertisement that you see on LinkedIn jobs where they are paying you know people 200K to become a prompt engineer consultant as a part-time or a full-time employee. So in order for you to get this job, make sure you have you know a lot of practice under your belt, okay? And number two is what you can do is once you have enough practice is sell prompts. So if you can build nice prompt, guess what? You can sell these prompts on sites like Fiverr or Upwork, okay? And last but not least is teach prompt engineering because prompt engineering is a brand new field, okay? There were no prompt engineer, you know, professor a couple years back, okay? I learned it in the past couple of years and you can actually learn it and you can actually teach it to other people as well because there are not a lot of instructor teaching prompt engineering. And that's pretty much it. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give me a thumbs up, comment something and follow for more.